Hello again, Strixwap. Diablo 4 Soap on Beta Tests are almost here, and I felt motivated to make some pre launch theory crafted semi builds that should be good for fresh into end game characters when the game launches. And I also plan to evolve those builds into full fledged setups when the game launches. I also want to keep them updated when we get rebalance patches and updates, so there's this to keep in mind. There will be 2.0, 3.0 and so on versions of those builds. This is one such build for the sorcerer class called Chaining Thunder. The beta test will only let us reach level 25 and only let us play uh, in the first act slash zone called Fracture Peaks. So those builds will be more useful for an actual uh, game launch when we have uh, no limitations and ideally for characters around level 50 or level 60-ish. I've used 50-ish, 60-ish skill points for each of those setups uh, that you could see uh, on the spreadsheet uh, I'll mention in a moment. Um, and uh, that's instead of the full 100, uh, full level 100 uh, skill points. And that's because I want people to be able to use this build to jumpstart their post-story and game grind. I've also made the spreadsheet I mentioned for those builds. You can see the link to, to check um, the spreadsheet with all the builds, pre-launch builds. Um, that, um, have short lists of the active and passive skills. Uh, why I say active? Because so in some cases you might want to switch one active with another one, switch the basics, switch the score skills. Uh, and I've included anything that could uh, still be synergistic with the setup. As well as the legendary aspects. I have included the legendary aspects best in SWAT for every um, item SWAT, but uh, there are some other ones you might want to mess around with, use as a filler temporarily, or just experiment with. I've shortlisted uh, usually around 20 of those um, in total um, out of the, the 9, 10 required. So, yeah, you can, you can uh, use the extra remaining skill points on the way to 100 in the extra passive skills that I've included in the spreadsheet that uh, I have not invested into. Um, so it's like including the skills for your future of that build, let's put it that way. So I hope you enjoyed this set of buckle up and let's go. Chaining Thunder and here we are at the skill points uh, and um, legendary aspects for, um, for this one. Actually first the skill points, legendary aspects later for this setup. And you can, as you can see, I've spent 56 points, uh, but I have included alternative skills. You have Spark or Arc Wash. You pick one of, or the other. I prefer Arc Wash but you might want to mess around with Spark and see which fits better the way you play. Chain Lightning, uh, it's, uh, it's a centerpiece of this build alongside the Ultimate and Masteries. But if you don't like Chain Lightning, there is a Charged Bolt option, but that would require changing some of the legendary powers uh, because I didn't include... I, I included them as options, but I didn't put them as best in SWAT, the ones that work with Charged Bolt synergy. Uh, I did put um, um, the Chain Lightning one in there in the list as well. Um, you can see we have Teleport, we have Lightning Spear, and Lightning Spear is not necessary. Uh, if you want to only have one mana spender, just get ch a Chain Lightning or Charge Bolt, and, and maybe get Lightning Spear very later in the game. But I think it works well, and there's also Bow Lightning. I included it as a mastery skill but I didn't put points into it to preserve them. You might want to remove a Lightning Spear and put points into Bow Lightning, or you might want to have Lightning Spear and Bow Lightning. We have six skill SWAT paired. There's one here, there's two, three, four, and five, and six with the ultimate. Uh, so six active skills is what we can have, and uh, I've included one for each of those. Uh, but for Bow Lightning, I didn't invest into it right away. Later on, you might want to invest into it. Um, uh, I think it's, uh, it, it might be better to just have less mana spenders uh, for, for the beginning. And then later on, when, when the mana regeneration picks up the pace, you can include that one as well. Um, you can see the ultimate. You can see um, Virs Mastery, the build around me. I tried to build around this and around Chain Lightning as the centerpieces. So let's have a quick look through them. Arquash, lovely. Um, a good upgrade. Um, if, it, um, if the initial uh, one uh, critic strikes, uh, it swipes another time. So you want crits uh, for this build as much as possible crit chance. 
Fitting custom 10 mil with arc wash reduces your cooldowns. Uh, lovely. It doesn't say what cooldowns. That means even the ultimate should probably get reduced. Uh, unless the ultimate cooldown doesn't count as just cooldown. So hopefully this works on reducing the ultimate. Uh, and um, I think it's lovely to have this rather than that one. Chain lightning. The good upgrade for additional bounce. So we have four bounces. There's probably items that would include um, uh, more bounces, but I didn't see any such legendary power. So we will have to figure out that um, maybe, maybe from some other sources, if there is, if there's additional chains, more than five. Um, if it critically strikes against energy with crit chance, it has a chance to spawn crackling energy. And crackling energy is something important for this build. You'll see later on why. Um, but if you don't think this is needed, this is also nice. The more enemies you hit, the more extra damage. And since it's five chains, that means 25% uh, multiplicative um, damage. Uh, then, as you can see, I've included passive skills. And I've included passive skills I didn't put points into. Well, those, uh, those are um, things that you might want to level up on your way to 100. You have... 56 out of 100 invested points, that means you have uh, 44 extra points to put into things. Uh, and that should give you plenty of things with, with this setup. Potent warding, I think you, you want to take. Mages or um, sorcerers are squishy, so uh, this should help a lot. Devastation, very good. Healthy enemies are enemies that have 80% HP, but I don't think it's, it's important right away. Teleport uh, must have um, escape mechanic um, and then you take less damage for 5 seconds. This one has 10 second, 10.8 uh, second cooldown. And this one, um, uh, for 4 seconds after teleporting, Crackling Energy deals 40% multiplicative more damage. Which is solid, but if you don't want this multiplicative damage and you want to be teleporting more often, uh, take this, it synergizes well with one more thing uh, we would talk about later. But um, this is uh, up to 3 seconds. Um, so decreasing the cooldown of up to 3 seconds per enemy hit. But this is more for starting the, the setup. So um, teleport into the enemies and damage them. So that you can um, hit 6 enemies. So you can get 3 seconds shaved off of this 10.8 for 7.8. Um, but you would still have 2.8 seconds um, um, of, uh, of um, downtime without this um, this damage reduction. But there are ways to make it so that you 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 proc this cooldown reduced by this um, by this thing here. Uh, and you might end up having this damage reduction permanently and just spamming teleport uh, all the time. Very lovely synergy to take advantage of. Those two I didn't put points into right away. You can put points into them eventually. Uh, this one reduces the cooldown of your defensive skills, but it can only happen um, once every 10 seconds. And it's only 3%. And it doesn't say whether it's 3% per invested point. If it is, that means there's no more than 9 points you can get. That means that that's around a second. A second shaved off of this, it won't be that great. It's not going to be, and, and you have to be cri critically striking, and, and it needs to be elemental as well, which it will be with this build. But I think this is not as important um, as maybe um, that one or um, or uh, where was it or that one for for cooldown reduction. But I didn't go for the cooldown reduction uh, here. I I went for that one. This one is lovely, but um, not early on. Early on, you would have trouble surviving most likely uh, if you're good at uh, dodging. If you're good at um, keeping yourself uh, away from harm, maybe take glass cannon then. But I would suggest um, investing into this uh, in like level 60 something, 70 something maybe. Um, wh when you when you can um, have all six skills, including bow lightning, um, and spam them and have enough mana and still not run out of mana. Conjurer Crackling Spear of Lightning. I really love this skill. It looks cool. Um, I've seen developers playing it and it's amazing. This one, 10% uh, chance to critically strike bonus against an enemy is another synergy here. And collecting crackling energy can reduce the cooldown of this. Um, which um, I don't see the cooldown. Uh, I tried to find the cooldown online. I couldn't find it. And uh, I, I, I 
I invented, I invented, I invested into this passive. I think it's a better passive for now. I think it's a lovely synergy. Um, so I'd rather do that. There's six seconds duration and having extra increased crit strike chance for that duration will help the build in general. Here, um, damage reduction against elites for each second you don't take damage or from any of the, these sources, which um, by these sources I'm assuming elites is, is what it means. And it goes up to 50%. So if for 10 seconds an elite hasn't hit you, um, I'm assuming, um, it means you would have 50% damage reduction uh, for the time they hit you. So you would, you would try to avoid getting hit, but when you do get hit, um, having that reduction is nice. This one is nice, getting extra damage reduction for every 100 mana you spend. Especially later on when you when you pick up the pace and you have bow lightning and you have so many things to spend mana, but you have so many things to generate mana, it will work lovely then. Now protection. Protection using a cooldown um, skill, a skill with cooldown, I'm assuming. Um, Now, uh, using a skill with cooldown grounds 10% of your maximum life as a barrier. Uh, and I think um, this one is not that um, important, not that great right away. But I think um, um, it's not a, a, a bad choice if you if you if you don't think you can spend enough enough mana to to keep this going temporarily. Maybe put the points here and then later put them back there. Uh, Conjuration mastery. While you have an active conjuration skill, you deal 2% multiplicative increased damage. And 2% is uh, very low. Even if it's 2% uh, for each point for a total of 6, um, you have to have this um, going. And I'm not sure what the cooldown is. Um, if it's anything more than 10, uh, 11, maybe 12 seconds cooldown with 6 seconds duration, um, this is something for late, late, late game um, investment. Decision magic, another thing I think it would it's not important right away, but it's definitely good to have it, especially considering the shared misery aspect we've taken. So in, in, in level 60 something you might put points here. Bow lightning, I already talked about it. We don't need it right away, um, but later on it would be uh, amazing to increase the damage output as long as you can uh, handle the mana costs. Crackling energy restores mana upon pickups. That's why I wanted as much crackling energy as possible. For bow lightning, I would pick this one, by the way. Um, I would pick this one so we can keep the mana up. But if you think you don't have problems with the mana, this one works nicely for extra damage. Here, this one is amazing. But this one as well, and I wanted to put points here. Because I think this is uh, more convenient for more crackling energy, for more crits, for, for more mana again, um, rather than a little bit of extra damage every time you stun an enemy, which would be happening a lot with this build as well, especially thanks to the shared misery aspect. Unstable currents works very nicely. Um, uh, it's it's yeah it's the ultimate for lightning skills. So whenever you cast a lightning skill, another random lightning skill is also cast. Um, it uh, lasts for 10 seconds. So for those 10 seconds, you want to cast as many lightning skills as possible in as fast amount of time as possible. Um, there is the cooldown of 68.5, and this one increases the duration. While unstable currency is active, collecting crackling energy increases the duration by 0.25. So if you can increase this duration to 20, 25 seconds um, on a big chunk of enemies at the same time, uh, I think this would be uh, perfect. Um, I think it's it's a lovely way to play the skill, um, to try and group up a lot of enemies and then boom, use this one and start spamming uh, skills as much as possible and hitting as much as possible. But this is every time you cast a skill, whereas um, this is every time you collect crackling candy. So it's not every time you hit, every time you cast. But once you cast, it casts another one and it just total um, total annihilation of, of uh, mobs, of, of mobbing grouping groups of mobs. So hitting enemies with shock skills increases your crit strike chance. Reset upon getting a crit strike. No need to explain why this is good. Uh, critical strikes with shock skills increase your attack speed. This is very good synergy when you're doing that because you'll be critting. 
a lot um, with all those. And you want that attack speed because it increases the casting speed as well. Um, and it's just, it just, uh, lightning skills galore thanks to this one. Electrocution, I, I think here you can take both upgrades, it's not one or the other, uh, like it is with those here, where you can take only one or the other. Electrocution, enemies deal 5% less damage for 5 seconds after being critically struck by your shock skills, very good survivability option. Not, not really needed right away if you don't need the survivability, but I think it's, it's important to take it. And conversions, uh, show skills have 3% chance to stun enemies for 3 seconds, uh, good synergy especially um, thanks to the shared misery which we'll talk about in a moment. Virs mastery, close enemies take multiplicative more damage from your shock skills and deal less damage to you. Good um, for extra damage to enemies that get to you to burst them down quickly before they do more damage and taking less damage from them, um, lovely. Let's move on to the legendary powers now. Here are the legendary powers of this setup. Um, those are the categories. I'll explain in a moment about those. Um, those are the SWATs and categories and the recommended best in SWAT for each category. I've shortlisted 20 powers. From those 20 powers, you need 10 to, to fill uh, your armor, um, trinkets, and main hand, off hand. Um, Nine if you don't go one hand off hand and you go two handed weapon. Now, um, what is there to, to say about uh, this? First of all, what are legendary powers? Legendary items drop with legendary powers on them. You can get them from mobs from all sorts of types of uh, sources of wood. Um, and um, that power you can take and put on another item as long as it's within the category. So there's defensive, offensive, mobility, utility, and resource, and all of those uh, powers from the same category. For example, Aspect of the Umbro is a resource. That means it can go on a helmet, on a ring, on an amulet. You can take it from a helmet, put it on a ring. Take it from an amulet, put it on the helmet, and so on. So this applies to each of those categories. Uh, if you're unlucky and the RNG doesn't um, help you find the right power, you can also do a dungeon. Um, here's a list that I've been scour scouring the internet for uh, for locations of the dungeons and the various dungeon names and so on and what drops where. Um, but uh, it's still limited. People didn't find much. Uh, I've been taking information from, fi from five, six different websites and from Reddit and from wherever else you can think of um, that Google can give me information. Um, so this is the zone where the dungeon is, this is the dungeon. You complete the dungeon, you beat the final boss, and then in your codex of power, which is a user interface of a sort, you would have that legendary aspect unlocked. And when you go to the NPC that uh, that can um, replace the, the legendary aspect of one item or put the legendary aspects in a, in a yellow item to make it legendary, um, you can choose um, the powers that you have unlocked from your codex. But here is the, the, the twist. If you use the, the 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 Codex of Power version of the Legendary Aspect, it will give you the bare minimum. So if it has between 5 and 10 of a certain stat, let's say between 5 and 10 uh, chance to proc, it will always give you the 5, the lowest possible, if you take it from the Legendary um, Codex of Powers. Um, but if you have it as a drop, it can be stronger. It could go all the way to the maximum. So... That's why, um, sure, uh, RNG shows you middle finger, you shove it up its butthole, um, but um, there's still room to grow and there's still um, reason for you to get excited by finding that legendary power yourself rather than from the dungeon. But the dungeon lets you fill in the gaps um, for your best in SWAT aspects if RNG doesn't uh, want to give you that. Now I'm going to quickly go through the recommended. Keep in mind, there's all sorts of notes. I've said what is a must-have. I've put notes around them. Um, this thing here is that um, um, you could consider those things here, de depending whether you use charge bolts or uh, chain lightning, uh, and if you're using lightning spear or not. So those here are options. From those, I've shortlisted the 10 um, requested for best in SWAT. Let's go for a resource first. Aspect of the Umbro restores uh, um, the resources when you crowd control an enemy and you will be crowd controlling a lot of enemies as you saw in the skill segment. 
and thanks to shared misery which we'll talk about later there will be even more crowd controlling enemies prodigy suspect uh, it's another one, and the recharging aspect is another one we can use for resource. I've used Prodigy, I didn't use recharging. Prodigy is this one. Casting ultimate skills restores mana, and that's a lot of mana, and we want that mana. You cast your you cast a bunch of things, you cast your ultimate, uh, and then it gives you mana so you can start spamming, so you can start triggering this extra random lightning skill. Um this in my opinion is actually a must have, um, and that's why I put it here. As for um, the recharging aspect, uh, I didn't take it, but it's here, it's the chain lightning one. Each time chain lightning bounces um, off of you, you gain another mana. Um, so you might want to replace something with it if, you, if you're struggling with the mana. If you're struggling with the mana, you can um, put it here. I do not recommend putting it in the amulet. You can put it here and either uh, put um, the splintering energy elsewhere. Um, or or just remove it. Um, you you can. There's various ways to re, to rework stuff. Uh, shared misery is our only utility suggested, and I put it on the amulet slot. Uh, why the amulet? It's fifty percent effectiveness. So uh, when you hit a crowd control enemy, there's thirty percent two x percent chance for that crowd control effect to spread to add another unaffected nearby enemy. And this 30% would become 45%. Um, if it goes to 40, that would mean um, another 30% of 40, a um, 50% of 40. So um, it will go um, uh, up to up to like 60. So from 45 to 60. I don't know what the max here is, but you definitely want that uh, to happen as much as possible. So you could uh, keep generating as much mana as possible. Um, there's that to keep in mind. As for the 100% effectiveness, only if you use a two-handed weapon, you can take that two-handed two weapon. That's why I put Elementalist Aspect, which brings us to the Elementalist Aspect. Um, elementalist Aspect is this one. Four or Mastery Skills cast at or above 100 mana gain uh, increased critical strike chance. And we have a lot of things that depend on us critting. If you don't feel like this is working often, if you don't feel like you have a lot of mana, then you could consider... Um, putting um, the, um, the splintering energy or retribution or even edge master um, on, on the weapon but it doesn't matter as long as you're not using two-handed weapon it won't matter which red one goes in which slot as long as the red ones go in the slots uh, where red is um, so I've only put it there as a two-handed weapon in case uh, you're wondering which red one would I want to go if I go for two-handed weapon it's elementalist and retribution is here as the one that I feel it's okay to sacrifice if you go to handed web. This is a retribution. Uh, it's pretty much distant enemies have 15% chance to be stunned for two seconds when they hit you. You do 30% increased damage to stunned enemies. And this is additive, not multiplicative damage. Um, there's another thing with damage to stunned enemies, which I used in the Reaping uh, Army Necro thing, this one, from a link. Um, it's also a good thing that you might consider. In fact, I'll add it to the document just in case. Um, so if you, if, you, if, you, if you want the synergy between pummeling and retribution, then you might replace something. Edge Master. Skills deal increased multiplicative damage based on available resource when cast receiving the full benefit while at full resource. Um, this is definitely nice. Uh, but again, you need to keep the mana up and if you can't, then consider replacing that with maybe pummeling. Um, and splintering energy is the lightning spear one. If you're not using it uh, right away, definitely you don't need it right away. Um, if you're if you if you've sacrificed it so that you have less mana mana cost skills while leveling up, um, you can just put something else. And I I have included plenty of options here for you to pick. Uh, as for mobility, we have Charged, Bouncing Conduit, and Wind Striker. Um, here is Charged. Collecting Crafting Engine increases your movement speed. It's definitely solid. Um, there's the Wind Striker, uh, which critically striking gives you movement speed and it keeps growing. Uh, it, it gets extended for each crit strike for another second. And then there's the, the, the Bounding Conduit, which not a bad one. Uh, gain movement speed for 3 seconds after teleporting. Which one you pick, it's up to you. I picked Charged. 
um, but you might want to pick um, the, the um, bounding, bounding conduit if you feel like it or the other one. Or you could just remove that one and put aspect of shared misery here and then open up the amulet for, for something with damage or, or for something with damage to stunt or something like that. So I hope this was all clear. Um, again, this setup will get expanded once the game launches, once I see how it works, once I test it. In the beta, I won't be able to test it. First, we only have access to Fractured Peaks, and there aren't that many of those things in Fractured Peaks from this setup, and I would only have 25 skills to work with, a few points. So um, hopefully it's good. Hopefully you, if you're watching this uh, right around the game launching, hopefully it helps you get some general direction of how to build uh, without uh, worrying too much about it. To get notified when I upload more content like this one or other builds and guides for water and not so water games, you can subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to not miss out on notifications. As well as uh, keep in mind there's something called memberships on YouTube which lets you be a paying member for my channel to get access to perks such as emotes and badges made by me as well as the option to get one-on-one uh, -on -one tutoring for the very basics of Adobe Photoshop, Premiere and After Effects. And memberships can be cancelled at any time if you no longer want to be a member. Uh, thanks for watching all the way until the end. Struck Club, keep it cool, until next time and goodbye.